How's it going everybody? Got another uh, quick fly time video for you today. This is a pattern that uh, I believe everybody's at least seen, heard of, or probably thrown at least once in their lifetime. Um, it's actually responsible for my personal best redfish on a fly, that 36 incher I caught earlier this year. Uh, it's Lefty's Deceiver. Very, very common fly. Arguably one of the best bait fish patterns ever tied. Um, real simple to tie, just takes a little bit of practice. But um, without further ado, materials you're going to need. Um, I like to use XPS, the straight shank. They're actually a worm hook, but these are uh, the 2 aught. I like to use the 2 aught because it's a one gauge heavier wire than the one aught. This tends to be about the perfect size. Um, you're going to need some hackle feathers, flash -aboo to match the rest of the fly. I'm going to be tying kind of a darker green and a white one, so I'm going to have uh, olive green and pearl. Some crystal braid or body braid some people call it a bunch of different stuff but there, it goes by a lot of names but just that typical pearly braid material and then your colors a bucktail and this is an optional one you can put eyes on them you don't have to uh, most of mine I do paint eyes but um, you can put whatever type of eyes you want onto the fly so to get started let's put the fly in the hook in the vise you can see this uh, this hook actually has those tiny little barbs on there. They don't seem to actually make much of a difference. I kind of use them to start the thread anyway, but they don't they don't get in the way when tying this fly. You can mash them down to the hook shank if you want, but they don't really get in the way. Um, first, select about five, four or five hackles. Make sure they're good and straight. And, uh, that's kind of a perfect one right there. You don't want one that's too webby or too thick. And it sometimes, for some reason, I don't know why, but hackles, when you buy them in packs, a lot of times the white ones are really kinky and really twisted up and just ratty looking. It usually helps to pick through the packs of hackles on the wall and see which ones look the best because I can't tell you how many times I've bought a pack of white hackles and the hackles are real, real ratty. And even this one's got a few that are in pretty bad shape but it's about you know I selected I think I picked out five um, measure out how long you want your fly to be I don't tie very very big really long deceivers until I get up to about the five or the six aught size um, these are gonna be that's about the right length right there for me what you want to do is take all your hackles cut the fluff off the end and trim them like so. You want to trim them so they have a little, kind of like a little foot that you're going to tie in or a little stubby end on them. And that way they won't spin as bad on the hook when you try to tie them in. I'm going to just go ahead and do that now. This is a tip that Lefty mentions in a few of his tie-in videos as well that those little stubs of the feather they actually really really help you tie them in um, some people like to tie the feathers in in bulk just tie them in in one big clump and that works but I like to tie them in individually so I can keep track of where they're going I don't like them to go all over the place and some of them you know be hanging out the fly and some of them be right in line just trim these guys up you'll get faster at this after you tie them. I've tied quite a few of these deceivers and they're kind of a mainstay pattern for me for largemouth, redfish, stripers, and even speckled trout. But um, the more you tie, just like with any other fly, the more of them you tie, the faster you'll get with them. So after all your hackles have been trimmed, take those stubs and I don't tie each feather in with a ton of wraps because I know I'm going to tie them in individually. So if you do five and six half, you know five, six, seven wraps of thread with each feather, you kind of risk bulking the back of the fly up too much. And I just alternate which side I tie them on. One on the near side, one on the far side, one on the near side, one on the far side.
and then the last feather just look if you've got one side that's got you know if you start it on one side just end on the opposite side that way they don't get too bulky or if you have an even number fly, even number of feathers just put them all you know split them one on half on each side and if those do like they're supposed to you should have them laying pretty straight right off the back of the hook always check make sure they are straight up and down as well sometimes they'll look straight to you but they're actually tilted off to one side at um, this point you take your flashaboo I like to use this as both kind of an extended tail as well as like a lateral line for the fly as well um, you don't need much of this stuff I usually use about three strands of it on each side of the fly um, and that's good because this stuff is slick so it helps to kind of fold it over um, run the strands right down the center of the feathers tie them in then instead of cutting it and running it again roll it over to the, to the far side of the hook and just get it running right down the feathers you'll see you can extend the stuff out the back of the fly um, you can see where you had it laying the first piece where you tied it in just clip it fairly even with that like I said I like to let it hang a little bit long that way when that fly is swimming in the water you've got this little tail that'll sometimes catch water and spin a little bit or swim a little bit behind it so that was the pearl I do the same step with the olive or if you're tying a blue one use blue flashaboo with your colored flashaboo to match do the same step three or four strands And it helps to just when you tie it in on the near side to go ahead and measure it out where you want it to be that way you're not trying to measure it after you've cut it if you tie it in on the near side and measure it out where it's supposed to be already whoops went under the hook that time um, if you measure it out where it's already supposed to be that way you can just pull everything back here and cut it and you only have to cut the other side you don't have to cut all the all the flash material at the same time so that's it. You don't want it to be too uniform. I like to have it a little, you know, straggly on each side or in the back. That way it's not, you know, a perfectly straight line. Now, take your body braid or your crystal chenille or this, I think it's called pearl, pearl braid is what this stuff is called. But what I like to do, tie it in right where we tied that flash in. And we're going to run it up the hook a little ways. What this does is it helps with the deceiver. Some people say when they tie deceivers, they, they often look really hollow and that they don't, you know, that the center of the fly is showing. This stuff will help us if the, you know, when the thing's in the water, when it's swimming, a lot of times the the hair will mat down and you can see a hollow cavity in the center of the fly this will prevent the fly from really having that cavity or at least when it does have the cavity it will have some flash in there so the fish have something to look at this also most of your bait fish on their sides they are real pearly or real shiny so if the fly starts flashing one side to the other or something a lot of times this will catch light and it'll help it look a little more realistic and give off just the right amount of flash capture that stuff the good thing about these hooks I actually like those barbs because I use them as a kind of a measuring or a area to tell me when to stop spooling material because I know or when to stop palmering the material because I know right above that that uh, first barb is where I'm going to be tying in all the uh, all the bucktail so that's it for the body braid now what a lot of people do with deceivers is they tie white bucktail on this side of the hook then they tie it on this side of the hook and that works but it leaves the fly really really thin and it doesn't give it that large bait fish profile that the deceiver is kind of going for if you want a thin bait fish profile you tie a clouser if you want that larger profile you'll either tie a deceiver or like a half and half so what I like to do is take 
a fairly generous clump of whatever color the belly of your deceiver is going to be, which most of them are going to be white. Um, take it, the same trick that I showed in the clouser, take the tips, pull out all that, all that shorter hair that you don't need. All right, takes a few strokes usually, and you see it keeps coming out. If you keep a good grip on those tips, it'll prevent any of the stuff that you want from sliding. Now, what I like to do is take this clump, and before you tie it in, measure it out where you're going to want it. I like to surround the whole hook with the white, and then just the back is covered with a thin strip of the color, and you'll see what I mean here. Um, I like to go ahead and measure it out where, if you're looking at it from the top of the hook, the back of the bucktail reaches about halfway down those feathers. So you've got just that small tip of the feathers sticking out as the tail. So if I'm doing that, that means I'm going to have to cut it right around in there. And uh, unlike the clouser, you don't really have to worry so much about cutting this stuff at an angle, you know, because the head is going to kind of be a ball anyway. It's not going to really be tapered. But a rotary vise helps with this fly just because I tend to tie hair all the way around the hook so it helps to be able to rotate it. A um, couple loose wraps and then pull straight down. And then you can kind of work that hair around the hook a little bit. I don't like to let it flare too much. If you pull too tight the bucktail will really try to flare on you and I don't want it to do that. So that's the first tie-in and if you see a couple hairs that are really really flaring on you or really sticking out go ahead and pull them out now or as you see them sometimes you have to clip them bucktail don't want to break on you I got a couple on this side as well it just helps to go ahead and clip them now because you risk cutting too much hair later then you can just repeat that step more or less until you have completely surrounded the hook with white bucktail. You don't need to have a really thick layer of bucktail. You just I like to have the entire hook surrounded just so I know that there aren't any gaps in the fly and that it doesn't look, you know, too thin. Pull out those long pieces, the pieces that are really long. Then grab the tips, and pull all that extra junk out. Measure this hair out the same. And this will kind of be my first tie in on the sides. See, the original deceiver, the way it's said to be tied, is just tie it on the sides of the hook. Don't tie any hair on the bottom. That works, like I said, but it just, it really leaves the bottom of the fly open. And I don't, I just don't particularly like the way it looks when it's open. So I like to just work on surrounding the whole hook. Yeah. Like I said, don't tie it in super tight because it'll it'll really try to flare on you. And if it tries to flare, that'll just make this fly look even more open. And I don't so what that's the whole reason we're surrounding the hook is I don't want to have any of those gaps in the fly. Take another clump. And it helps to use generous clump because you're gonna lose at least a third of it when you stroke that shorter hair out. always measure it out sometimes when you're tying these you can get a little ahead of yourself and forget to measure it out and then you'll get chunks that are too long or too short and the flies and even symmetrical Now, unlike the clouser, I would normally be cutting the thread, I mean cutting the uh, material and tapering it that way. I didn't have to risk having a really big head or anything. And you notice I just covered a lot of that material up with the thread. That's because I like to let this head get larger. It helps 
it helps give this fly the right profile that we're looking for. See, this is when, now that I've got the whole hook surrounded, this is kind of when you want to look around the fly. If you see any thin areas, like on this side, there's a little bit of a thin spot. We'll take a smaller clump of bucktail. And work on filling in those gaps. Like so. And you can also kind of loosely tie it to the hook and kind of work it around with your thumb and let it kind of spin around the hook and that way it'll fill everything up. So as you see, when you stroke that fly down, it's going to have a little bit thicker profile than a than a clouser would because those feathers help bulk the fly up. I got a little thin spot on my side that I'm going to fix real quick and then we'll add the back of the fly, which is your darker colored darker colored hair. This color that I'm tying is actually the the color that I caught my personal best redfish on that 36 incher. Um, my personal best redfish on a fly, and it's kind of a mullet imitation color. It's a dark green back. I know mullet typically have that black or kind of a brownish back to them and the white belly, but um. This color, when it gets in the water, combined with that flash, it really does look like a mullet. And the uh, the fact that this fly doesn't have really any weight to it um, lets it swim real high in the water column, just like a mullet would. So it really does do a good job of imitating them. So right there, honestly, you could, if you wanted to tie a uh, just a white deceiver, you're pretty much done. I mean that that fly will fish no problem. Um, we'll catch you as many species as you can think of. Just a natural white fly has always been one of the best colors. Now I'm just trimming out some of the really crazy fibers of hair that are sticking out. It kinda it's kinda bound to happen when you're tying these if you tie in as much bucktail as we are just because you're adding that many more steps but I think the few extra steps really make these flies look better. See a little piece up here I want to trim too. Oops. Let's see here. There we go. All right. Now to add the uh, the color. Um, this is a really dense bucktail of mine. It's kind of sometimes can be a little hard to work with, but um, you take a clump of bucktail about the same about the same uh, thickness as we've been using the whole time and make sure to clip it close to the skin this is where making sure you pull all the uh, all the short fibers out really makes a difference you see how we got some really really long ones in there too pull out the really long stuff and the really short stuff because this is going to be the back of the fly and you don't want to have a whole bunch of crazy pieces going everywhere when you're looking at the top of this fly. The water will do a good job of matting most of it down, but I like to just limit it before it actually happens. Um, that's about the perfect amount, maybe about the width of a pencil, maybe a little bit more. Um, we're going to tie this piece in a little bit differently. You measure it out same way you did before. It's okay if this piece actually ends up being a tiny bit longer than the rest. Like if you wanted it to be back here you could because it'll drape down and look natural all the same. The way we're going to tie this in is not necessarily 
you want it to be right on top of the hook but you don't necessarily want all the hair to be perfectly on top of the hook you want to kind of let it slide around a little bit that way the back drapes over kind of the whole fly rather than just a thin line on the back and if you let it kind of spin around you'll notice it also helps you taper the head of the fly too and uh, always get a view of it from the front make sure it looks the way you want it to look could actually use a tiny little bit more on the far side just gonna take a few strands This is on y'all's near side, my far side, but um, just noticed it kind of was favoring my side of the fly with the back, so it helps to make it uniform all the way around. There we go. And now, pretty much done. Um, last step, another optional one is if you wanted to you could add basically a throat of sorry camera cut off if you wanted to add a red crystal flash for a throat you could you just take a few clumps or a few little pieces of it this is pretty much used up flash here um, something about like that turn the fly over fold it around your thread and then tie it in right on the bottom right up against the hair of the fly run your thread down it and that just gives this fly just a little bit of extra something for those fish to see it kinda looks like gills to them as well and uh, same thing trim out you know trim it to shape now And I like to just kind of let it move on both sides of the fly, like so. Periodically, while tying these, I like to, you know, pull the hair back. Looks like I might have nipped a couple pieces of bucktail while I was doing that, but that's okay. Periodically, I like to stroke the flies back. That way you know where everything's laying and what it's going to look like in the water. But as of right there, you're pretty much done. Uh, just work on tapering this head nicely and whip finish. If you tie it correctly and use the right amount of material, the head should just about taper itself. As you tie the fly, it should end up just about perfect. Snip your thread off close. One thing I like to do with these flies um, you don't have to do, once again, it's another optional step. I like to take a Sharpie that kind of matches the color of the top of the fly and give it just a light dusting on the top. And this Sharpie is actually a shade or two darker than the hair that we used, but it still is green. So it helps. I think it just makes it look a little bit better. And that's it. Uh, the trick is let that sharpie dry before you use your head cement like Sally Hansen's or something because a lot of times it'll bleed all the way around which once again won't really hurt anything but just to make it look better I just like to let it dry for a few seconds. Um, if you want to you could put eyes, you could put um, these are 532nd stick on eyes, you could put those on there. I don't think the eyes in this fly make that much of a difference but on a lot of mine I just do the simple paint eyes. Here's another one I'd finished with the painted eyes. Um, tie these in a bunch of colors. Chartreuse and white. Solid white. Blue and white. The gray and white. And then red and white. That's all the colors of them that I'll throw and then of course the olive and white here. Um, caught fish on every one of them 
all seem to work just fine. If y'all have any questions or have any suggestions for another fly that you want to see us tie or want to learn how to tie, just send us a message and let me know. I'd be happy to do it. Thanks a lot.